Now, the, the bottom box, which has been inverted, and you'll see why shortly, um, is where the pattern is going to be placed. The parting material is to ensure that sand doesn't stick either to the moulding board or to the pattern. And um, tal yet yeah, talcum powder was used quite uh, quite a lot. Uh, very finely ground limestone is also used, and it simply forms a barrier between both the top box and the bottom box and the patterns and the sand. The first layer of sand is usually sieved so that the um, pattern isn't going to be damaged by any lumps, any objects like bits of stone, screws or whatever uh, and we're getting the best, of the best quality uh, sand around the pattern to begin with, just a covering and that will enable as much detail as possible um, to be uh, you know, uh, imprinted in the mould surface. Uh, without um, crushing or damaging the pattern, the, the sand is rammed in with a rather wedge-shaped like tool in order to make sure that it uh, is really compressing itself, being compressed around in, both in the box and over the pattern. Loose sand will simply fall away and um, cause the kind of imperfection that we really want to avoid. This goes back to the object being really best made quite solid. Oh quite yes, thick. oh yes, it, 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 yeah, yeah. The more solid the better, that's right. Um, plastic can be used, uh, providing it's dry. Uh, quite a number of different kinds of materials can be used, providing they're, they're solid and will withstand you know, any, the impact of the, uh, of the sand and the, and the ramming up process. Now, the, the top of it is run off. Uh, as flat and as smooth as possible. That is the back of the pattern. And those little holes there, which are quite important to where the screw will go to enable us to lift it out. Okay. How's that looking? Might be worth putting a bit more parting material okay. on, on, on top of that to uh, ensure the um, next layer of sand doesn't stick. It's going to be dusty. If, if I can um, try to explain what might happen if you were going to have a diff one different kind of pattern would be to have another side of this. So in other words, this, it would, for instance, I might want to do that. Okay. That becomes a split pattern. And A couple of pegs would have been drilled into here with holes in here right. so that that pattern could be laid 
on top. So it sort of locks in place. That locks into place. Yeah. So that when we go through this process again of ramming the sand on top, we will actually have the other side of the pattern sure. in the top box. Yeah. When it's taken apart, the pattern is split again and each piece of the pattern is taken away. Right. With, with the object of these two, two halves being moulded, they would mould actually right. together in other words, when, yeah. when So come. it would have a back and yeah. a front. Yeah. I mean, these objects that we've got here are more like plaques. Yeah. Sure. I don't need to sieve so much of this top one because it's not containing any of the pattern. Sure. Very good print of the um, top side of those objects there. And although we haven't got time to show another um, kind of mould that you could make, a void as it were, that you could make through the sand casting process, I could hand carve into the sand. It would be possible to create a void by carving into the sand. And if that print corresponds to this print, I could do exactly the same here. So in other words, I, it would be possible for me to fill the two boxes with sand as we have done, take them apart, draw in one, and take a print of it with the other box. So I had the print of the bottom box on the top box. And then it was possible to work by cutting and carving into the sand. Mm. The sand will enable you to do that. So although we were talking about patterns that were previously made, it is possible to use exactly the same process, but to do making of the mould, the void, uh, in a much more kind of freehand mm. kind of mm. way. Right, now what we need to do now, we've got the... Um, the backs of the patterns there, and they're going to be taken out. But we need to provide access into these spaces, what will become spaces, for the metal to be poured. Which means that we've got to create runners for the metal to be poured into. Okay. okay. 